Hello you lovely lot and welcome to the beautiful Cudmore Fisheries. We are on Panama Lake today and it is official folks, this is my favourite lake in the old wide world. Apart from Jumble which is just down the bank there behind me, that's my favourite lake in the old wide world. But we are going to be doing a basics jigger fishing session today. So obviously if you're on a bit of a budget, you know, and you can't afford loads of top kits, the beauty of the jigger is you can basically explore whatever depth of fish you're at. At the minute, the F1s are feeding really well on here, so I want to showcase the jigger in all its finest from catching like that deep to going down that little bit deeper. Really, really easy to set up, you know. Certainly the Preston jiggers, they all come uh, already ready to go. You have the little stop, you have the actual float, and then all you've got to do is just put your shots in your hook length form. Dead simple. So, without further ado, first thing I'm going to do is get top kit. Now, obviously, because it's mainly F1s, you don't, I'm not going to say you don't catch carp jigger fishing, but it's usually every other fish species you can think of, in particular F1s, Eid, Roach, things like that. You will get the odd carp on it, but it's not, not really for carp. So that's why you want to use a softer elastic. So I am using uh, the 11s Jury Slip today. Cushion's absolutely everything. It's perfect. Now, main line. 0.16, 0 0.18 mainline will do you for everything. Because I say, it's not carp that you're after, so you don't need to use a heavier mainline. And in particular, I spat everywhere then, folks, do apologise. You don't want to go too thick on the mainline because, you know, depending on obviously what jig is it you're using, the mainline might not actually go through the body of the float. The other thing that you need to do as well is when you're storing, I haven't got a blooming winder, when you're storing the jig at the end of the session, or if you want to make a few up before you go out for your session, don't put it on a winder because what that does it kinks your line up in fact stay there folks i'm just going to get what just so i can show you what happens when you're taking the line off now obviously there's not a jigger on this but i just want to show you what happens when you're taking the line off a winder come on it off you see you get that so you get that curve there just above your float and there's another one there just above my back shots yeah if you can imagine putting your your float in your jigger the actual float is going to get caught on them little curves of line and that's not what you want so don't store it on a winder you want to store it on like a an eva spool or what i do i'll just leave it on my top kit ready to go in my hard case bag just leave it on the top kit and then you're ready to go so we're having a bit of a tangent then folks isn't that but ignore me so 0.16 main line we'll just tie the loop for the top get rid of that line and obviously that is getting connected over there, oh, I'm all fingers and thumbs, folks. Here we go. That's on. That goes over my connector. Dead simple. Pull that down. Now, obviously, depending on how deep the venue is, will depend on how much line I have. Now, obviously, the whole idea of jigger fishing is you can pretty much pick up the fish at whatever depth it is. It's five foot down the middle here, so I want to make my jigger probably about half depth. I'm going to do it to like two and a half foot. Now, on other venues you go to, such as the first one that springs to mind, folks, is Lindome Lakes and like Benny's or local where it's really deep, you know, sort of like 10, 12 foot. You might want to do a jigger for like, say, up to like six foot, seven foot or something like that and just have a, you know, maybe another another one set up for like your three foot, four foot. But sort of like go half, I'd, I'd, I'd recommend, if you've only got like one top kit, not loads of top kits, go sort of half depth of what the lake is. So I'm going to go for like two and a half foot today. Now, bearing in mind, obviously, a lot of the fish will be shallower than that, but this is the beauty of the jigger. It just allows you to fish whatever depth, you know, where them fish are. So we've got our line out, two and a half foot of line. The next thing I'm going to do is just put one of the stops on. Now, these will come as part of the, the pack with the, the Preston jiggers. So that goes on there. That pulls onto the line. Get rid of that. So we'll slide him up, and then we just get the jigger. So in this case, I'm using the smaller one of the two we do. We do a four to six and an eight to 10. I know I'm not gonna be putting any heavier baits on. I don't want it too heavy. This will take four number eight stops. So the four to six mil, put the line through there and that goes all the way through. So you can see how that's sliding and then it's stopping on that stop there. Yeah, that's what we want. Obviously it's gonna stop at your, your shots this side and stop at your stop on that side. Stop at your stop, you know what I mean, folks. Next thing I wanna do, just put a little loop in my line there just to form the hook length. Just a simple double overhand. And then I'm going to use my Ninja Ninja Death Star here just to get my loop nice and accurate. There we go. Little bobby loop. And then we are going to get 
some stats on the go. So, as I said, they take four number eight stats, and obviously, oops, I've lost my blooming stats, folks. That will not sink that float. Now, on some fisheries you go to, you're not allowed to overshot. So, if you um, fully let that all the resistance go, and your float sinks, that won't be allowed at some fisheries. So, these ones in particular take four number eight stats and that'll sit just above the water. Now, obviously, we're not fishing it like you would a, um, a conventional float in that, you know, that's fixed. We're fishing it, so we're keeping in touch all the time, and that's the beauty of the jigger. You, you've got a tight line to your, to your hook bait, basically, all the time, and the fish just up themselves. It's so good, folks. I can't stress how good it is. So, I don't need to, like, spread these shots out or anything like that. We're not looking for droppers. It's literally just a bulk of four number eight stots just on your on your hook length loop now hook length depends on basically what you've got i've got six inch pre-tied up lengths and that's that's going to be good enough for me you know what as well for i'm going to say a longer hook length can be more beneficial because your hook falls a little bit more natural rather than a, a four inch or a or a three inch something like that so straight out of the packet 16s sflb Let's get one of them out straight off the winder <laughs> oh, i love these folks no messing about and then we're just going to attach that loop to loop so as always folks hook length over the main line and then your hook back through the main line there we go and that is the finished rig so six inch hook length bulk of four number eight stops and we've got like two and a half foot of line on there I position that stop that'll change depending on where i'm catching the fish but basically the idea is we're just going to lower that nice and slow until we find out where the fish are and then obviously the fish are just going to hook themselves there's a couple of different ways of you know um jigging if you like in that you can lower it with how fast you think your bait's falling or we can get down to a certain depth and then give it them fast flicks noise comes into it as well folks so you assume you're slapping the rig over as well the fish will come into that noise but use it it's just a case of feeding putting your rig into it and then just lowering it down so and the fish just take it so really really simple setup folks in it as i said the beauty of this style of fishing jigger fishing if you've only got sort of like one top kit two top kits you can you can just find out what depth of fish you're at and it's in a way you go you know what i mean it's so simple nothing complicated with it at all uh, so i think i've done enough waffling about how to set the rig up I think we need to go and catch some fishies now. Right then, you lovely lot. So we're just about to start, but you can see here that my line ends at three foot. So I'm going to put that stopper at two and a half foot. Now, obviously, again, you'll encounter this at some fisheries. They'll state that you've got to have a minimum of, usually it's around six inches of line pull tip to float. So you know there, we've got exactly six inches. We are fully within the rules. And all we're going to be doing is lowering this down so the float hits there. And you just find out where the fish are. It's such a good way of fishing, folks. So, first things first, let's get some bait on. I'm going to go in with a single magwai first. And I'm going to I'm going to hook it through the side. Now, obviously, I've told you, I've talked about this loads, hooking it through the side, because that's how your bait's falling. When you're in a lot of fish, I don't think it matters. But just to start off with, just try and get a quick response. We're going to hook it through the side so it's nice and natural. So squeeze that maggot out, fold it over, just so the actual bait is following the shape of your hook yeah i've talked about that load so first things first let's get that on now i'm going to be feeding through a catapult as well rather than loose feeding because with a catapult you can get basically whatever distance you want if i was loose feeding the bait's going to be going over a bit of an area so the beauty of the catapult is it does group that bait a lot better for you now just before we go out just going to put some bait in and then we're going to ship out and the first thing I'll do is slap the rig over. So I'll slap the rig over and then hold that float and then, oh. <laughs> that did not take long, folks, did it? That was literally sort of eight inches below the surface. Let me just get some more bait in. But that's, that in one there, folks, is why you want to feed before you go out. So that there is some fish there waiting for you. If you just went out and then started feeding, chances are it's going to take you a little bit longer to catch a fish look at them that's a beautiful f1 that that's a ghosty f1 let's come out with the net that's like a got a, a bit of a ghosty head on it that tiki 
Look at that beauty. Oh, why? Two pound. He's fell off in the net. We'll get him out there. Get him in there. Good one, the fish is. And the bait's come off, so in fact, I'm going to hook it normal now, just to be quicker. But I'm going to put it through the point. Yeah? If there's a few there, then hopefully we'll just get into them a lot quicker. So, same thing again. Bait it up. Just before you go out, put some bait in. You see how much better grouped it is with a, with a catapult. I'll just saw under the surface then as well, folks. So one slap over, bring the float up and then just go to lower. So you can see the line going through the body of that float. I felt something then. Usually they just hook themselves and I want to get straight. Yeah, he's on. <laughs> this is so good, folks. As I said, it's my new favourite venue in the old wide world. It is just phenomenal. But it just goes to, to showcase how good the jigger is as well. In that if I was fishing conventional rigs like fixed floats, um, you know, I'd be, I'd be missing a lot of bites because they're such fast biting fish, these F1s. And if you weren't fishing in the right manner for them, you'd be missing so many bites. And that's where, obviously, the jigger comes into it. He's nailed it, he has. That's where the jigger comes into it in that you've always got a tight line to the business end, to your, to your hook, in effect. That maggot's all right. Look at me, I'm not even changing maggot, folks. I want to get straight back in. Again, don't get out of that rhythm of feeding first. We've not even got a... Not even got deeper than like, what was that? He was 16 inches deep in that money. Not even got deeper than that. One slap over, so they come to the noise, lift your float up, and then just go to lower that down. Oh, yeah, that one, yeah, that one's on. So that was about 16 inches. But you see, like, there's no striking involved. The fish literally just hooked themselves. How good is this, folks? It's so good. So that's one way. I don't know if we'll be able to, <laughs> if there's a few there like that, I don't know if I'll be able to show you the other way of doing it we'll have a try on this next one so the 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 most popular way is to lower the bait down like i have been doing look at the size of these fish folks beautiful ones they're all sort of two and a half to three pound absolutely stunning yeah so that's the the most popular way now we know these fish are really shallow so what i'm going to do is bring that stopper down to about what's that about 18 inches now what i'll be doing is putting the rig in, letting it settle, and I'll be fast, fast jigging, yeah? Because the beauty of fast jigging is, certainly with a longer hook length on like this, when you're giving it that flick and then dropping it, what happens, obviously, them shots fall nice and quick, and then your hook length's up here, and it's just falling so natural. But by the time the fish have, like, taken the bait, gone spit it out, you're already on that upwards, upwards lift, and that's just, you hook them every time then. You can only do it when there's a lot of fish there, now, there is a few fish there, so we're going to try it. Might take a little bit longer, but I just want to demonstrate a different style. You know, if you're encountering lots of fish on the day, certainly I the ones for this as well. There's a lot of ids in, in the water that you're fishing. They do like that, that sharp lifting. If bites, uh, bites can be a bit of a problem with just lowering it. Because sometimes what you'll feel when you, when you lower their baiting, you'll feel like little taps on your pole. And that's certainly in this case, F1s, but I'd as well, I'd are notorious for it. They're sort of like touching your maggot, cheeky, and then just rejecting it straight away. So by doing that fast jerking action, they ain't got time for that, because once you've sucked it in, they say you've already, you've already struck up and into them. We'll see how it goes anyway. I mean, obviously at the minute, if I was fit, I wouldn't change anything at the minute. It's going to be amazing, folks, isn't it? So I'm not going to lower it in, just literally slap it over, let it settle if it does settle, and then it's fast, fast lifts like that. Fast lifts. Yeah, so you can see that stopper going back to me float. But it's that, that natural fall of your, of your hook bait. There you go. That natural fall of your hook bait. Took a little... Did it take long? I don't know. It's still blooming fast, folks, wasn't it? But you can see the difference in that. I'll do it, I'll do it again. I'll demonstrate it again. Um, just experiment on the day. That's what it's all about. But this is the beauty of jigger fishing. No matter what depth of fish you're at, when they're up in the water, you can, you can find them. You know what I mean? You don't need loads of top kit. One top kit does all, folks. That's why I love it. Nice and simple. Rock up, one top kit. Get jigger on and catch fishes like that. So we'll catch, catch another one like that. Change that magwai, though. Go on, the magwais. And then see if we can have another quick one. Always make sure as well, folks, that yeah, your stops are always on your, on your hook length. They will move, and that's why you use stops so a lot kinder on your, on your line. So I'll put some bait in first. Ship out nice and quick. 
one wallop over, let that settle, line's going through, and then start to give them fast and fast lifts. And you catch them on that bit there, where you're lifting up, that bit there. That's when you catch them. Just put some more bait in. So I'd say the other way was, was a lot faster. I'd have had one by now that other way. It's just all about experiment on the day. Yeah? It's them little lifts up. So if I go to lower it again, so I'll come back up there and then just lower it again. However fast you think your bait's falling, obviously pellets are going to fall a little bit quicker if you're using pellets, but certainly maggots, casters are going to fall that little bit slower. You're just lowering it at the same speed. Let's give it a couple of, oh, that one on then. Give it a couple of slaps. And right back up and then just lower that. All about, as I say, just experimenting on the day, finding out what the fish want, whether they want them fast flicks or they just want it lowering down. There we go. That was another one lowering it. But you see, it's just nothing complicated with it at all, folks. You know, a lot of people are, you know, sort of, not scared to use them, but just sort of like not using it in the correct way, not using a jigger in the correct way. I've seen people use them as an actual fixed float before now. <laughs> and obviously that's not what the jigger's purpose is for. It's, its purpose is to catch these fast biting fish, F1s, and I'd, there's I'd in here, we haven't had any yet, so many blooming F1s there, uh, that's designed to catch them fast biting fish because you're always in connection or you're always in touch with your hook bait. And obviously when the fish takes it, it's hooking itself against them, uh, them shots there, them heavy number eight shots there, and they just can't get away from it. It is one of my favourite ways of fishing in the old wide world to go with all shallow fishing folks. But get out, give it a try. You've seen you don't need, <laughs> you don't need loads of top kits. One top kit does all. Just experiment with the flicks and experiment with lowering it in, but make sure you keep that bait going in, and you will have a, a wonderful session, folks. So let us know how you get on. Right, you lads, very, very sorry to interrupt your video watching. How dare you? Quickly, if you haven't already noticed, that we have managed to write a book, haven't we? Yes, we have, Which Jamie. Which is full of all our very bestest methods and features or whatever else we do on this wonderful subject of fishing. So if you haven't had a look already, go and have a look at winningways.shop and buy one for yourself.